happy to have the Center for Writing and Pedagogy at Crea University today to help us, you know, uh, think through narratives in our work and practical approaches on how we can, you know, adopt um, some of these tools to have a better narrative flow in our writing. Super excited to welcome Professor Ananya and her team to lead this workshop. So a bit about Ananya, she directs the Center for Writing and Pedagogy at Korea University, where she's also an associate professor of literature. And prior to this, she set up the Center for Writing Studies at OP Jindal Global University, and she's also taught at Shivnadar University. Her current work is focused on developing writing pedagogies for the Indian classrooms from the school to the university level. So welcome Ananya and a warm welcome to your team as well. Um, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Diksha. And I think I saw Preeti join in. Thank you, Preeti, also. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me back. I had a lot of fun with the first workshop I did. And I think uh, I remember that was on description. And this time, uh, uh, when I was asked to come back, I asked for some material. Uh, and from what I got, I thought it might be fun to talk about narrative. With that, um, I'll uh, share my. Uh, screen. Um, and I must say, I had a lot of fun preparing uh, for this uh, workshop today, partly because um, I did some things I don't usually do, right? And, uh, and what those are, we will, we will go over that. And, and the point that I want to make about narratives and narratives in our writing, in our research writing, is also something uh, that struck me quite powerfully as I was preparing this and we'll see whether that holds or not, or whether that needs a little bit more work to think through. I'll be very happy to see how you respond to this, right? So thank you Diksha for the poster and for the set of readings uh, that you shared. So today's workshop is called Narrating Our Data. And this is um, aimed at, I know, specifically social science researchers as, uh, uh, as there are uh, at the lead center. So uh, getting on with it right away, um, um, I'll say this, uh, that, you know, when we talk about narrating our research, um, you know, depending on where we are at our research stage, uh, one can be at different states of being able to, you know, coherently talk about what work one has done or not. Uh, but what that coherence is, what drives or draws that coherence is what you want to pay a bit of attention. And the way we are going to do this is uh, there are certain readings that um, Diksha had uh, kindly shared with me. And these are readings, actually, these are articles and research work that um, researchers at LEAD have produced. So, um, Samir, may I request you to share the first link first? Um, and then after that, uh, just share the other three links as well. If you could all just keep the tabs open, then whenever I get to it, you can um, uh, look at them and go back and forth as you, uh, as you need to. So, um, so narrating our data, and I begin with uh, a question for all of you, which is this. When I say narrative, what comes to your mind? And at this point, you can either speak or you can uh, put a comment in the chat box. But when I say narrative, what's coming to mind? We have a story. Two people have said a story. Okay, wonderful. Story. What else? Consolidating the data. Consolidating. Very good. Consolidating the data. Nice alliteration there as well. What else? Explaining the data in a coherent manner. Explaining the data in a... You're, you're already doing the work for me. Explaining the data in a coherent manner. Wonderful. What Time. Else? Time. Excellent. Love that. Very useful. Yes. Uh, we also just have some requests to go to slide sharing mode, but I know you can't edit. I well can't. While I'm typing, I can't. Uh, is it not visible, the screen clearly? I think maybe if you can zoom in, people might appreciate that. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Better? Uh, Ananya, can you present 
the day uh, present the slides like slide show no i won't be able to type if i present through a slide show. oh okay okay makes sense yeah, makes sense. yeah. so what are some so, but i've increased the size of the text see if that's a little better now we have one response saying yes it's better okay great so what else so when i say narrative and you know don't don't worry too much about it what else what else comes to your mind voices ha huh? voices excellent voices and you can you know think outside work as well where does narrative come to you from does it come to you only because you are researchers at lead or is that the origin of narratives we have beginning middle end excellent beginning middle end aristotle would be so proud flow flow narrative flow excellent what else emotion emotion very nice structure structure yes perspectives perspectives to go along with voices one is visual um one is oral what else someone else has double down on perspectives and saying point of view who is narrating okay point of view excellent context. give an example context give an example of a narrative histories histories excellent description description very good ethical integrity mm. okay uh, but uh, uh, if you peel this back a bit uh, inference ethical integrity i will keep it here but i don't know that that is always the focus of every i mean these are kind of general principles about narratives and they're true about i think all narratives we think of but this is it really though this points towards something if we peel this back a little what might we get and if we can't we'll come back to this anything there was uh, was there another response sami yes we have inference uh inference uh again i'm going to put this uh in inverted comma simply because i think uh, these we need to unpack a little bit more to see where, how they are a part of other uh, narrative i won't say they are not but we need to think about that a bit anything okay. else sabina yasmin has offered the ramayan or the mahabharat as an example okay, okay excellent uh, examples um, are epics right epic stories and these could be uh, um you know from whichever um this could be from other um, other cultures as well we have another response saying conversation yeah. uh now uh, when i said this is interesting we will get to this so i'll put that next to voices actually why don't i do that um conversation right so then when there are voices the voices uh, may be talking to to each other and that construction that's a part of the narrative yes i agree so um thank you so much i mean uh, i'm sure there are some other responses that you might have uh, hold on to them and see when we can um, you know uh, we might be able to bring them in at another point in the conversation today but i love what we have on our board so far right so when i say story when i say narrative uh, the very first response was story and in fact uh, although if you ask a literature person which i am uh, uh, they they might uh, actually say that story and narrative are not exactly the same thing but for the purposes of today's workshop uh, we will use story and narrative interchangeably uh um, you know technically narratives are a part of the are a part of the story uh but today i think it's all right for us to think about story and narrative uh, interchangeably uh and i'm going to use that and i loved how some of um uh, some of the instances especially things like consolidating data or explaining data in a coherent manner has already uh, come uh, come into the picture the question though is how 
how do we consolidate data and there are various ways in which you all already do it now how can narratives and stories uh, become a way in which they help with that consolidation and that coherence um, so we'll think about that somebody mentioned time and i absolutely agree uh, time and the unfolding of time and the way in which time is woven into how we um, how we present our data, that's a very, very important part of that. Voices, conversations, the idea of a beginning, middle and end. Actually, um, you know, I should uh, put this um, um, next to... Now I think you're audible. Oh, I was not audible? Might have just been me, but okay, all right. So uh, okay, so the point being that the idea of the beginning, middle, and end, classic definition of what a story is, uh, you know, uh, comes. This definition comes to us from Aristotle. Uh, emotion, flow, structure, perspectives, points, points of view. These are all very, very useful uh, characteristics that you have all already contributed, and I'm going to. Uh, uh, touch upon several of these as we um, think about how this can help us work with uh, narratives when it comes to our research work. And for that, I'm going to turn, turn to uh, um, an article that uh, uh, Diksha and Preeti shared with me. And that article and the link to the article you already have, it's by Fabrizio, uh, your colleague Fabrizio, it came out quite recently in Business Life. Um, now, here, here are some questions I have, uh, which is based on just what you see in the slide. So if you've read the article before, great, but if you haven't read the article, it doesn't matter. My first question is this, what does the title lead the reader to expect? So the title is, How to Make BCs More Viable. And you know, feel free to just unmute your mic and uh, speak your response. Uh, that's all right, also. We have a solution to a problem. Uh, okay, solution to a problem. Right. So, what's the problem? Uh, we have. A couple more uh, responses after that. Should I read those up? Yes. Why don't you go ahead? Yep. Ways that BCs can be made more viable. Yeah, which repeats sort of the title, but yeah, that seems to be the thing. It expects us to uh, see what, I mean, do we know what BCs are? I didn't. Yeah, but, Ananya, I was going to say that actually. Joya yeah. here, I was going yeah. to say that for an untrained reader, I wouldn't know yeah. what BCs are. So we, so it expects the reader to uh, be told what BCs are. Because if you don't tell me, I, my mind goes to other places, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what then else? You have steps or solution to make BCs more feasible. Okay. Steps for solutions. And why? Because this word viable, right? Viable and someone said feasible. So clearly something is not uh, viable or feasible at this point. The title actually, tells us. Yeah, that's the most recent message we got in fact. Yeah, so that there's something going on. There's something called BCs and they are not viable or feasible. Uh, but the title already, although it begins with a how, it's not, uh, it, it's, a, it's a statement. It's a statement of a process. How would we make uh, something more feasible and viable? Because it seems as though they are not. That's what the title expects us to believe. Now, do we get a direct response to the title? If we read uh, what comes after that? Uh, Samir, may I ask you to read, read it out aloud? Sure. Uh, exempting all business correspondence from TDS and applying nil GST rate to all transactions performed by them will help. Thank you. So, Joya, does that answer your question? What BCs are? It answered mine. Yes, now I know that it's, yeah. yeah. So these are, so if someone like me or Joya who doesn't know what this is, then immediately we are told that this is a business correspondence and how to make it. And you get, uh, you do, 
Uh, yes, so I will just type yes. You do get a direct. How to make it feasible? Uh, the problem is that they are not feasible. But how to do it? Here are the two things. Exempt all business correspondence, DCs, from TDS and applying nil GST rate to all transactions performed by them, right? And uh, TDS, uh, if we don't know, uh, the article is going to expand on that as well, and so will it on the GST. But as the assumption is that broadly, most of us also know, have a sense for what TDS or GST might be, and it gives you the solution right away. My next question, in an academic paper, what would we call this blurb? sort of this tiny, what I'm calling a blurb uh, abstract, right? So you have the title and you have this in an academic paper, what, the, what would this be called? Uh, Samir, uh, you're on mute. Right, sorry. Uh, Deeksha has put abstract, question mark. Uh, this, yeah, so it is an abstract, but in the academic paper, when you have a statement like this, where do you expect it to go? What do you expect it to, what do you expect to call it? Next response is synopsis. Synopsis, abstract are the same thing, which are abstracting what actually here in this particular case? Uh, recommendation. Uh, yes, it is a recommendation, but... Central thesis slash focus. Thesis. There you go. So that's the thesis. That's the argument. That's the main point. And this, you are right to say that it's in in the in this paper, it will take the form of a recommendation. But this is the main point, right? So you have the title, and right away, just between the title and uh, this little blurb here, you have the problem, uh, and you have the solution. So now, what is left to do? Right. What is left to do is to elaborate all of this in a manner that's actually engaging. Now, how to write up this research so that people enjoy reading about it and understand the point of the article clearly. Right. And I have uh, purposely put the word enjoy in bold and understand in bold. So clarity, clarity uh, about and around the point that you want to make, but in a way that's both enjoyable to read and write, right? And with academic writing and research work, quite often we forget to associate enjoyment either with the process or with the reading or writing of it. It's all supposed to break our teeth, but it needn't, right? And what's the point if it's going to be like that, right? So moving on from there, if you have the article open, you'll see what I've done here is I've basically just copied out, um, uh, taken screenshots of various, um, sorry, various parts uh, of the article. And here it's the beginning, the very beginning of the article. So since this workshop is about the narrative, my sense is that one way to think about, and as I said, to both enjoy and understand, and I, I, my sense is that if we, if the narrative is strong, uh, if the narrative is strong with you, then, uh, then that's something that will make the writing both uh, enjoyable and clear to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us track what the narrative arc is. So what do I mean when I say narrative, right? So if you look at the very beginning, it says, and this is how the article begins. At the end of a long day of work, Rajendra, a construction worker from Bihar, leaves his worksite in Delhi, heads to a local Kirana shop that doubles up as a business correspondent, BC. He buys some snacks and sends 1,000 rupees, 1,000 in remittances back home. Only a few years ago, to do the same, he would have had to go to a bank losing a full day's wages, or more likely he would have resorted to informal channels. So the very first thing that happens in the very, it's it's like laying out a story. There's this guy called Rajendra, uh, finishes work, uh, goes by snacks, sends money, and this wouldn't have been as easy earlier. Um, and it sets up, it sets up a, it introduces the protagonist. And I must say that this is a classic way in which protagonists are introduced. If you look at Shakespeare's plays, for example, right? Macbeth, Hamlet, um, you know, they are, they are talked about first. They are introduced first. Now, before they even come on the stage, somebody will talk about them, 
right? So this idea of introducing, and of course here it's interesting because Rajendra is not going to be the protagonist. Rajendra is there to add the human element. Someone talked about emotions uh, as an important part of narrative. So creating that context with the human element in which this, uh, you know, this the, the, the uh, business correspondent as a business is going to work. Uh, is introduced right away, right? So introducing the protagonists is something you have to do. And as I said, you know, Shakespeare couldn't have done it any better, right? And Shakespeare used this uh, tool all the time uh, to do that, to set up the scenery. In fact, the next paragraph sets up the scenery a little bit more, right? So you introduce the protagonist, you set up the scenery. There is no ATM nor bank branch in his village, but his wife, Aditi, can safely and quickly withdraw the money Rajendra sent her from a local business correspondent. The VC also has helped her access COVID-19 relief packages that were credited to her PMJDY account a few months ago after the outbreak of the pandemic. Now, this is huge, right? So if something can help at the time of the pandemic must be a really good and useful thing, right? So the scene is set. There's a couple that's separated. One lives in rural India, one lives, works, um, in urban India somewhere, money is being sent. And not just that, you know, relief at the time of the pandemic, uh, this became the source, the business correspondent became the source that not just connected the couple, but also provided um, much needed relief during uh, something that's ongoing and really, really difficult and challenging in people's lives. So, so far, it sounds like a really nice story. There is the pandemic, there is uh, the problem of uh, uh, sending money and it turns out and uh, I left out one little paragraph which talks about, uh, you know, how there are many more VCs than there are banks and ATMs in rural India and, and that number is huge, right? So basically as a protagonist, the VC is set up as a protagonist and then when you come to the very last uh, uh, excerpt that I have on the slide here, it should not be a surprise then that in April 2020, they were recognized as essential service providers and in April 2021 as frontline COVID warriors to be prioritized for vaccination. I mean, this is huge. This is amazing, right? So this is the kind of recognition to something uh, that then there is no doubt about. So, so everything seems quite good, actually. Now think about, you know, stories you've read movies you've seen where you begin with you know here is the situation here is the scenario here are the protag here are the here is the protagonist here are the here is the human element in it and everything is going all right and you know you get that sinking feeling in your stomach and everything is very happy and hindi movies especially you will have your happy song as well everything is going really really well and then that sets up the stage for the problem. So here's the thing. And this is classic storytelling, right? You set up everything as works very well. And, and right now it seems like, so what's the problem? You know, it's working very well. The government has recognized it. And not just that. Um, uh, business correspondents are frontline COVID warriors. I think that's the biggest medal anybody can get in our times now. All that has happened. Everything is good and happy. No problems at all. And then basically you realize that this is a setting up of a scene for the problem which is going to be introduced next, right? And here's what I will say, right? Anytime there is uh, the word however, and equally the word yet, uh, we need to sit up and take notice because that's when we know uh, the problem is being introduced. Uh, Samir, may I request you to read the text that I have uh, excerpted? Sure. In line with its financial inclusion strategy, the RBI has adopted a policy direction that clearly demarcates an intent to strengthen, expand, and support the BC model. However, a policy note recently published by LEAD at Crea University argues that two key taxation issues are hindering the sustainability and attractiveness of the BC model. The application of tax deducted at source, TDS, on cash withdrawals, and the goods and service tax, GST, on financial transactions conducted by BCs. So here is the situation, right? So all this recognition comes to what? In fact, the, the, the extract here begins with that, you know, RBI has also adopted a policy that clearly demarcates an intent to strengthen, expand, and support the BC model. 
right? So the intention to support this is all there, however, right? So it's like saying, yes, we are supportive. All of that is going on. As you can see, uh, our Sanskari Alokna doing at the left. Oh, of course, I fully support your choice. However, you will not inherit my money, right? So same thing is going on here. So however, a policy note recently published by LEAD argues that two key taxation issues are hindering the sustainability and attractiveness of the BC model. So it may be going on very well, uh, or it can potentially go on very well, but here are the problems. And because of which uh, uh, this, uh, this model that seems to work well cannot work, right? So what we get after the setting up of the scene is the problem. Right, And the problem here is articulated with the help of the word however, and the pay attention, I mean, using the word however correctly to set up contradictions, to set up problems. This is a very, very nice template to think about how to set up a problem, that this works up till this point, however, after that it doesn't, right? So you see that uh, structure here. Now, now that we know this is what the problem is, and this is early on, and don't look at the uh, essay yet, but just from the way that this part is written, what are we expecting in the next paragraph or the next set of paragraphs? So we've had the protagonist, the scenery, the setting, we now know what the problem is. What are we expecting as readers in the next paragraph? Details about the problem highlighted and the solution. Right about so details about the problems right and depending on what the uh, venue is uh, if you are writing an opinion piece in business line and they tell you 700 800 words and no more you can go only to that much depth or if you and turns out that this is a policy that this is a small excerpt or a presentation from a larger policy note that uh, that has actually been written right so details about the problem now the issue is how detailed can you go uh, including to talk about, you know, the method with which you, uh, which you utilize to study, depending on your platform, you may or may not be able to talk about it. Now, the example that we're looking at is a kind of example where they don't give you very big word limit and you know you're writing for an audience uh, that may not uh, know all the technical terms like I did, it, right? So details about the problem with some uh, solutions for sure. And also, um, uh, what else? What the, tax, what the taxation does to BC is on the ground. Yeah, so I think I'll put, uh, so, uh, you know, what is it doing on the ground, right? So this is both TDS and GST that have been identified as the two problems, right? So explain what the problem is, why that is a problem, and possibly tell us a solution. In fact, from knowing the title and the abstract, we know that there will be a solution proposed to why it is not viable. And now we know why it is not viable and feasible, except we don't understand the details yet. And if you're interested in the details, then as we read on, hopefully the article will tell us what the, why these two uh, things are being a problem. So that's where you go, right? So the, these are the two problems now. If you look at uh, uh, the next paragraph where uh, somebody rightly pointed out that the details of the, of the problem have to be given, notice how that is done, right? So for citizens who have not filed income tax returns every year for at least three years, which is rather common in low income settings, et cetera. So what does that paragraph do? That paragraph does exactly that, tells you what TDS is and how TDS works not for everybody, but for the um, a lower, but in the lower income setting, how does it work? It gives you the bare uh, details that you need to make sense of this narrative, that it works in this kind of a scenario or setting like this. And then the next one begins, next paragraph, because on the other hand, if that amount exceeds blah, blah, then something else happens, right? So it gives you the complexity of the situation that here is it, here, here is what this means, here are the details of it, and here is where it begins to get complicated. So you set up the problem, right? 
and the problem and then look at the last uh, uh, the, the last paragraph on the screenshot yet the application of this clause is controversial in instances where bc is affiliated to a bank blah 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 what i'm interested is in the template right what i'm interested is this is how it works here is an explicit provision in it but or yet the application is controversial right so it's typical of a story plot where scene setting problem and then the problem thickens right the plot thickens there's one more problem there uh, and it's in the application of it uh, you know think back to again you know storylines plot lines about how we listen to stories right so not only did this happen to the protagonist that also happened this is what is good these are the details of it and here once again i want you to pay attention to the word yet yet the application is controversial so i am going to suggest that that the setting up of the problem how we set the problem how the problem thickens the plot what questions so problem crisis controversy these are all various ways of saying that well this is the issue that we are dealing with quite often um, uh or, or let me put it this way that it's one way in which uh, uh, around which narratives are built so um, many of you said that okay you know uh, to build a coherence in the data to narrate the data uh, and i think the kernel of that may be to formulate and articulate a problem and you see that you see how in the working out of it very simply but very clearly that has been done right um um uh, so then as we are tracking the narrative what do we have so far so so far we have the protagonist right um it's so I, i'm i'm thinking of all the story plots we know protagonist savior of the poor kind of a uh, 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 figure we have here where is the location um uh, it's in india urban but largely rural location when someone someone had mentioned time that's a very very important part of narratives uh, this is a present day narrative um the research is around what is going on today in fact the article says updated in august 2021 so clearly as more data comes in um you know this work is getting updated now what is the plot the plot is that the savior of the poor bcs um uh, the uh, bc is finding that helping the poor becomes difficult because the rich zamindar who apparently supports the poor and also the savior of the poor also has two thugs on the payroll who keep thwarting the efforts of the savior of the poor right now think back on the number of films you've seen number of stories you've seen it's it's a classic fit right so there is somebody who wants to help out um the vulnerable and then there is the powerful who is saying that okay i want to help and this is the language of support and all of that but in the implementation of it uh, of course here i have perso personified those two things um, those two uh, uh, elements identified as gst and tds as literally thugs who are basically not letting the bcs do their work right so if you think you can actually plot this on to some classic stories we know where the problem is understood in this way um and so so far this is what we have we have a classic story this is what it, this is the pattern it's following and here we are so now what to do right so there is the problem and the bcs can't do their work and the they can't do their work because the very agency that is saying that they can do the work is also thwarting it by employing thugs who will get in their way right so then what happens and you have here the lead researcher this is sharukh khan from rai saying mai aa raha hu right so what what does a researcher do at this point right so turns out that the savior of the poor has some friends at ifmr lead who decide to help by doing what by fig figuring out what the situation is collecting the relevant data analyzing it and presenting a reasoned argument and recommendations to the rich zamindar to rein in the thugs right so this is what so as we proceed with the article then what is the job of the researcher the job of the researcher can be understood uh, as 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 uh, as um, doing this kind of work uh, really coming into the picture and saying okay let's figure out this situation uh, this situation on the ground as somebody had helpfully pointed out 
So, uh, and then if you move on to the next bit of the article, or to see, and I've skipped, I think, one or two paragraphs here. But so apart from, so I've already highlighted parts of the narrative arc, uh, there are some other really important elements of the narrative. Uh, and what are these? Um, and this is a very, very helpful uh, template. Now I've highlighted all these words and phrases and we will go over them. Then you need, so in the data, people already responded by saying that, okay, you need to make the data coherent, but what does it mean to make the data coherent? What are the kinds of words and phrases you might use uh, that will allow you to organize the data in a way that it becomes coherent? And uh, so what you notice here is, for example, phrases as for instance. Now, if you're going to use, for instance, it means you're going to, you're getting ready to give examples from your data, right? For instance, services provided by a BC account for blah, 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 right? So topic doesn't matter, but a phrase like, for instance, is going to help you organize your data. So this is an example for uh, idea X or idea Y or, or concept X or uh, whatever it is. So organizing your data in terms of instances or examples. So for instance, is a very useful thing. This is because. Now, again, lovely phrase. This is something that allows you to look at reasons, causality. Why is this happening? Ask. It allows you to ask the kind of question where you are uh, looking for a reason to explain what is going on, right? Um, so it turns out that we have, uh, that, that when we are telling a story, we are doing different things as well. And to substantiate a story, we might have to give examples, we might have to give reasons, uh, and we might have to also consider consequences or implications. So for example, this leads to an unintended inclusion error, right? This leads to a certain kind of consequence. So the implication of this is blah, right? Again, a very, very useful phrase. Meanwhile, right? Meanwhile is a time indicator that at the same time, this is also happening. Meanwhile, so while the TDS is doing whatever else, meanwhile, the JST. So again, think about, um, you know, the two personified thugs. One is doing this, the other is doing that. Simultaneity of time uh, in the narrative. If there is more than one protagonist, if there is more than one element on your time scale, uh, one will have to, in one's narrative, indicate what these different um, uh, factors are doing at the same time. So while TDS is doing this, meanwhile, uh, uh, GST is doing that. So applying, applying a nil GST rate to blah, blah, whatever details. So again, meanwhile, I want your attention on the word meanwhile, which is a time word, which indicates the simultaneity of action, right? Remember, when you're narrating a story, then these are the various elements. There are people, there are events, there are actions. Um, then finally, all of this allows you to do what? It allows you to say, in this light, it can be argued that. Again, excellent phrase to adopt and utilize when we are writing. And the point I'm making here is that these are words and phrases that help us do some very important things as we are organizing our data. So lining up events, when did things happen? Are they happening simultaneous, simultaneously? Something happening before, after? All of that is very important to pay attention to. And these are the words. So pay attention to words that help you work with time. Meanwhile, here is one example. And as you run through your vocabulary, you'll find others as well. Uh, give examples, for instance, give reasons, consider implications or consequences, and basically help us make the argument. And the awareness of that, the, the reason why I've highlighted these phrases is because it allows you to present this with an awareness that I'm not just giving you an example, I'm telling you this is an example. I'm not just considering an implication, I am telling you this is an implication so that the reader is also not confused. These are also called signpost phrases. These allow you to label what work you are doing as you are writing. So please do pay attention So, um, uh, okay, so then the last portion is recommendations. We have been promised that, and there is a bunch of recommendations. Ensure that all BCs are exempt while looking for technical solution, examine whether. So it's not even 
uh, sort of an open and shut recommendation. It's like, okay, this needs to be done, but we still need to continue to study. And this is the hallmark of a good conclusion, which not just gives you solid things to stop with and say, okay, so this is the concrete take away from this, but also opens it out and, say, and says, okay, there is more work required or needed, and it opens it out and points to what future direction um, researchers, other researchers or the same person might undertake uh, because not everything has been understood about the problem. So what this allows me to do is that it allows me to say, and uh, 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 Preeti and everyone else uh, who's here, please jump in and correct me um, if you feel like this needs modification or qualification. But I want to say right now strongly this, that social sciences research in the way that it's conducted and presented mostly is basically a problem and solution format of a storytelling, right? So it is storytelling. If you're thinking about narrative, what is the format of that narrative? The format is problem and solution, right? Um, so what I've done is I have thought about, so I thought about all the reading I have done and I have come up with some basic templates of what that problem and solution format might be. And I'm not saying this is exhaustive. In fact, I will um, ask you to think about and contribute some more uh, right away or later on if you can. So what are some of the basic uh, templates of social sciences uh, storytelling of the problem solution format. Number one, understanding and explaining a problem in its complexity, right? And it could be, in fact, even to say that, um, uh, let's look at this problem in a new way by asking a different set of questions. So uh, formulating a problem, asking a question in order to understand a phenomenon, in order to understand a situation, uh, is part of what social sciences research will do. It may not go into solutions at all. It may stick with the problems and explain the problem, right? And do the study in order to understand the complexities, the layers involved in the problem. So that's one. Noting the problem and recommending problem sol uh, solutions to it. In fact, that's the example we looked at right now. Looking at the problem, articulating the problem, noting the problem, and also recommending solutions. Then studying whether an intervention by a solution work to whatever level of success to alleviate a problem. So it can be studies and uh, uh, papers and research work can be directed towards looking at interventions and solutions to measure whether they worked or not, and then come up with, okay, it was fully successful or not so successful, or uh, you know it was mixed results or whatever, but studying intervention and solutions studying the implications of some of the measures, right? So that's uh, uh, that's more, uh, so looking at perhaps what a study might have done in terms of studying uh, uh, solutions and problems and thinking about implications and, con uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 thinking about implications, thinking about consequences and speculating, perhaps even going at a, in a speculative direction, in an abstract direction, thinking about uh, using that to think about the problem. Uh, is another way. So these are some uh, formats of the problem and solution format of storytelling, as I'm calling it. Uh, can you think of some other formats in which the problem and solution sort of model for research work in the social sciences exist as you've done it or as you have read? I'll be happy to note down uh, some others. And of course, there's variation and combination and all of that. But again, just drawing out basic templates, I could come up with these. I'm happy to take any uh, suggestions you may have to add to this basic uh, template format. Samir, uh, uh, yeah, so make sure you are unmuted. Yeah. I'm happy to hear your voices as well, if you will uh, want to unmute and speak, or if you have any comments on the templates I've drawn right now, I'll be happy to take that as well. So I'm not sure if it's similar to the third point. But uh, may, may I, may I uh, know who's speaking? And I'm Gayatri. Gayatri. Yeah, Gayatri. Go ahead, please. So comparative study of different solutions to the same problem. Yeah, yeah, comparative so stu yeah, so studying solutions. Yeah, so it could be comparative studies, so variation on that. 
Hi, this is Disha. I just yeah. want to add one thing. So one thing I think we struggle with sometimes is that, you know, like this piece uh, lends itself to very straightforward recommendations, but usually that doesn't happen with the kind of, you know, other research Correct. that we do. Correct. Correct. So um, sometimes, you know, we also tend to jump to recommendations because we feel like, you know, as researchers, we should provide some kind of solution. So how yeah. do we qualify, you know, some of those, some of those recommendations or solutions, you know, how would you recommend like we, we frame them when we know that we can't necessarily draw like that one-to-one -one connection. So I think the, the, the important thing there is to figure out that's why the basic template, right? So you needn't, in fact, to feel that you have to recommend a solution is actually not part of the basic template. If you choose, if you feel that your research work is one which lends itself, as you said, to straightforward recommendation, then fine. But if it doesn't, right? So for example, uh, uh, point number one, understanding and explaining the problem in its complexity and saying that, look, we're looking at the problem. This is a complicated problem. The, this is something that others have not considered even when they think about this problem. And, uh, you know, that, that we can't make a straightforward recommendation based on this. Or if I have, if we are making these recommendations, we're making them cautiously, cautiously keeping, in keeping in mind X, Y, or Z, Z, that it can only apply to if the conditions are such, but it wouldn't work outside of that. And we are already aware of it. So I think in the way that you put it, you already gave the solution, which is if it is not a straightforward recommendation, don't sell it as one. In fact, qualify it. And one of the good things about being, you know, an academic and a researcher is that we are quite happy staying with problems, staying with questions and recognizing that there is no straightforward solution to this. So I think making that a part of the narrative. So the basic template gives you it could be one which can give a solution, but it could be one where you're studying the intervention and deciding that, okay, it worked, but not fully. Uh, you know, some things worked, something didn't work. Do a comparative study of solutions or do a comparative study of problems. But the point being that it is uh, uh, a one way to think about it, that this is work and writing, which is based around the formulation of problems right does that seem that does that sound like a fair um estimation uh, or a fair sort of templating of what work it is that we do when we are doing research and the reason why i'm sort of stressing on this is that if we understand it to be that then how we narrate it becomes actually a little bit clearer if my template is that i am going to study a situation and I'm going to try and understand its complexities and I'm not burdened with giving a recommendation. If my template is that, okay, this problem exists and I've figured one or two solutions, they may be straightforward or they may be conditionally applicable or whatever, I will say that, but then that's the template I'm working on. Then your narrative is actually going to uh, um, depend on that. So I think that it's it's important to pay attention to what work we are doing, and it's possible that you know we are doing some of all of this, but for a particular piece of writing, for an article or a report, that we focus on one part of it, and when we become aware uh, that, then our narrative about it becomes clearer. Um, any any doubts or questions around that? or any observations? I think that makes complete sense. So I would just add that maybe then that also kind of in, should inform our choice of the format. Like in this case, we, you know, we suggested, you know, let's do an op-ed because we knew that we could say X, Y, Z. But right. whereas in other cases, we would say, okay, you know, we can't do a policy brief. Let's just, you know, make this a discussion note or something else because we, we cannot make those very concrete statements. Excellent. Very good. So narrative, narrative closely connected to genre. So then is it going to be opinion piece? Is it going to be a brief? Is it going to be an EPW engaged? Because the expectations of the, how much information you're putting out, for example, method. Uh, one of the things that we do is we talk about a method, a research method. But again, an op-ed piece, 800, 700, 800 words or less, there's no room to do that, but EPW Engage will expect that or a long form policy brief will absolutely expect that, right? So, but the basic format is not the different amount of details you can give where or how will depend on the venue uh, and the genre will depend on what it is that you are attempting to present. So moving on from there, uh, so it seems uh, what I'm suggesting here 
is that you know articulating this this problem solution format in that um, you know you, you can't get to solutions unless you have articulated the problem. So the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem?